Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're gonna be looking at Gaming Gladiator Quinn on his TA in the mid lane, and watch how in the first 15 minutes of the match, he dismantles Nigma Galaxy and makes them look like bots. In particular, I want to look at how he doesn't really mechanically outplay Mikey, he kind of just methodically and strategically brings down the Quap and wins the favorable mid matchup. So without further ado, let's break down Quinn's gameplay so you guys can get better at Dota, and let's get into it. Alright, before we get into the main part of the video, I do want to let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game League website, where we're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken and really take your game to the next level, I'm going to be able to help you. Because sometimes the guides on YouTube, there's either not enough of them, they're not specific, or they're just tier lists. Which I know you guys love, but at the end of the day, the Game League website is going to help you get to the next level. So click the link down below and sign up. Alright, for a little bit of context in the TA quad matchup, how this matchup goes, or should go, is that TA can dodge dagger with meld. So, Quap tends to be hesitant to skill Dagger. However, if Quap knows that TA skills Psyblades or Refraction, he can skill Dagger to basically heal himself and do a little bit of damage. And from there, as the levels progress, Quap tends to struggle as Refraction blocks most of Quap's damage. And as a result, TA over time should win the trade and eventually kick out Quap. And so at level 1, what Quinn does is he actually skills the Psyblades. Maybe he could have skilled his Meld and tried to use it to dodge dead daggers, but a lot of the time, Quap will just skill Scream of Pain, because Scream of Pain is better for last hitting. But once Mikey sees that Quinn has Psyblades, he skills up the dagger, and Quinn is just looking to push in the wave. You can see that he's auto-attacked at this point the wave about 5 times. He's looking to push it in, and simply harass the Quap. On top of that, he almost seemed somewhat willing to give up the range creep, I don't know exactly why this was, I guess he was just okay with trading one for one, right? He traded range creep denies. And I believe the reason for this is because you don't want to overextend his TA at level 1. What people do wrong in favorable matchups, and I really mean this guys, what people do wrong in favorable matchups is they think, oh, I'm stronger, I have to be so aggressive and get every creep and dominate the lane starting from minute zero. And this is not true. You win the lane over time in most favorable matchups. Think about Viper against, let's say, Phantom Assassin. PA honestly beats Viper at level 1 to some extent. You can die to Blood Grenade plus, like, Blightstone Dagger. However, as the match progresses, well, Viper tends to be able to keep PA off of her with Nether Toxin Threat and just Poison Attack in general. And there's a lot of matchups like this in Dota. And from there, I would say the main advantage to this matchup is just keeping it generally shoved. You'll notice because Quinn pushed in the waves level 1 with Psyblades somewhat hard, now he has more creeps than Mikey. And this is a good thing because when you have more creeps in the mid lane, it kind of just allows you to play aggressive and not get harassed. Because if the enemy tries to ever hit you, they're just going to be eating too many creeps. And you can see, Mikey has to pull aggro and play defensive. Quinn continues to shove the wave right 4 creeps to 3 creeps. Then, once he has this creep advantage, he pulls aggro and that's going to split the wave. Right? That splits the wave, and this now is a major issue for the Quap, as he has to decide between running through three creeps and contesting a range creep. Mikey makes the right play and gives up the range creep, and Quinn understands that because he has the creep advantage, he will now hit level 2 first, use that level 2 to then secure this range creep, and this is why he is so damn good. It's not because he's mechanically insane, I'm not saying he isn't, he is, he's good, but trust me, most of it is understanding of how the lane plays out. And now to be fair, even off of that, because of the fact that Mikey CS'd very well and Quinn messed up a little bit, they're even, right? So things aren't even that extreme, so let's keep going. So the next major outplay that Quinn has is on this wave. So this wave was pretty even, in fact to some extent it didn't look that good for Quinn. Mikey is able to push in the wave, he goes for a deny, doesn't get it. The range creep ends up splitting, and this feels kind of bad because it splits very early and I think before Quinn even wanted it to, so he loses the range creep, right? Not so good, and the Quap's only right behind him on CS and even, even on the Nyes. However, what he does well here is he feints backwards. This is extremely high skill and will always work in your average pub, and I really mean that. It will basically always work. So what you do is when the range creep is coming up, you act passive. And this is particularly in favorable matchups, keep in mind, is you back up, right? You kind of make the opponent think, okay, the range creep last hit is coming up. When the range creep last hit is coming up, what you do is then you walk forward. You walk forward, you pull creep aggro off of the range creep. Now, unfortunately, it didn't pull aggro off early enough, so it put it was actually in range of an auto attack plus nuke. Quinn doesn't care, right? He understands an auto attack plus nuke 
takes quite a bit of time, right? You have to do both. It's not that much slower for Quat, but it is slower. And so what he does is takes the time to walk up, right? Baits Mikey in, walks up, and now you get off a meld. And in this matchup, if you get off a meld, Quap cannot trade. It's way too much damage, it's all of her armor, and as a result, he just gets very good damage on Mikey. And this is kind of the beginning of the end to some extent for Mikey, as it's going to become a resource battle from here on out. And this is how this matchup plays. You find any opportunity to bait the Quap in and get off a decent meld, or you just simply hit her with a ton of Psyblades if you're on your game that day, and as a result, the Quap will just run out of health over time. And now from there, if you're trying to really dumpster the lane, the items you want to be buying, it's kind of just like movement speed and magic wand, right? You want to make sure you have enough resources where if you get ganked, you can turn it around and spam refraction. And the boots just kind of allow you to chase down a quap who isn't going to buy early boots. You might be like, what do you mean by chase down quap? Well, it's very likely in a favorable matchup, your supports will and should come mid. And for gaming gladiators, they understand if we have a TA mid against a pango or a quap, which is the matchup I think they like picking it in the most, those two, then they will bring the supports mid. Okay, and this is something you can ask for in your pubs as well. You can say, hey, I have a favorable matchup. If you come mid, we will be able to put a lot of pressure. Pressure in the form of either killing the enemy mid, doing damage to the tower on the cart wave, or taking the power runes. These are the best scenarios. And now in this clip here, we see the literal end of the lane, and it comes on the fact that Quinn gets his boots. I can't stress this enough. I honestly thought that in the replay, he was going to buy Gloves of Haste so that he could look for more Psyblade opportunities. But I was wrong, and I learned from this from Quinn, because, well, with the boots, he can walk up to the Quap, and as I said, in a favorable matchup, it's everything, because now you can get your supports to come in, particularly Furion in this case, a very common support right now. He forces the blink, Prophet then can TP mid, he's clearly calling, he blinked, he blinked, and he's got no tangos and no crawling! You can't do that against Furion, it's not, it's not an option, and so it's a great play from Game and Gladiators. He gets the TP off, uh, from Mikey, which is a good play, but at the end of the day, it, it's devastating because not only does he have to TP out, it's on a cart wave, and so your mid tower is going to take massive, massive damage. This feels terrible. You're losing half of your mid tower, right? Just gone, right? Half. And so now he's going to look to get the six minute room because he hit six first. There's nothing he can do about this on Mikey. He had to go base. You're never going to get six first. You have to go base, right? But basically, ever. And so he's able to use the trap to control up the mid wave, prevent it from going under tower, which is really cool as well. And he gets a haste rune on the top side of the map. And now with the haste rune, it's just very clear what to do. If Quap ever even slightly oversteps, you just walk him down because there's nothing Quap can do in this matchup. And with a haste, a Venge and a Warlock TP probably won't do anything. In fact, they'll probably die. And so yeah, as the wave is pushing in, he runs up, clicks haste, and just kind of forces him under the tower. From there, he's going to cut the wave, forcing the next wave under tower, putting a lot of tower pressure, and this causes the mid tower to take even more damage, using the remainder of the haste to once again force out the Quap. And it goes from a matchup that was pretty even on CS and net worth to a 1200 gold gap. The Quap had to spend so much on regen, and now a TP scroll, that he is almost even with a shaker. To be fair, shaker got first blood, so it's a little bit cheap, but... You get the point. And I don't know exactly how this is the case, but Quinn also got two D wards mid. I really, I really, really don't know how. Like, he he got two D wards. I think in this case, this is just Enigma Galaxy being horrible. I'm, I'm being blunt, but there's no other way around it. If you're playing against TA and you are putting down sentries so that she cannot have traps mid, right? Because that's a big way to counter TA mid. You place sentries so to get rid of her traps. That's what every good player does. You can't place a ward directly near the sentry. That's just insane. That like that is literally insane. It will I don't even think he was trying to D ward in hindsight. I think it was just he was trying to make sure he had trap control mid and then happened to get an ops. Like I'm almost certain that's what happened. And now from there, I think Nigma Galaxy just has the wrong idea of the game. What I mean by that is you have Quap against TA, and not only that, you have Quap against TA when Quap is extremely poor. And TA has a shield rune. This is not the time to try to defend mid. I unironically think the best play is just give it up and, well, do something else. I don't know, pressure Darkseer, try to kill him with Rupture, right? Maybe block Sven's Ancient Camp somehow, or Darkseer's Ancients. I don't know, I just think that contesting mid in this game is not correct. Now, hindsight's 2020. I know that they both die, but at the end of the day, it's pretty clear when you have a co-op against TA that you can't actually fight. I think they were trying to stall, but that's a very hard task. 
Now from there, I like what Quinn does. He doesn't overplay his hand. He knows he's 400 gold away from Blink Dagger, and so what he does is clear the mid wave, and then he clears Ancients. I think a lot of players would say, I'm destroying the game, and I'm a mid player. I'm gonna roam instantly. I'm gonna go kill them. But you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this because you're so close to your next item. Whether or not that's Dragonlance, or if you're going Deso, Deso, or Blink, whatever it is, you can complete your item. So he completes the Blink, and now, eventually with the blink, after shoving the midwave, he gets the blink from out of vision, which kind of, they could have seen the courier and clicked on it, but he sort of gets the blink from out of vision, GH comes to clear the midwave, and he just instantly dies. Now from there, what Quinn is going to do is clear, uh, typically clear the next midwave. He also comes, oh no, oh god, the stacks, oh god, <laughs> he takes the triangle stack, and by the way, Anytime you take a stack like this, you need traps like this or like this. I like this one because they're going to always come from the north or from here. Cover your back. So it's just about covering the areas when, you, when you're going to go invade, right? You have to use the traps to do so. And so now he walks top. I think the idea here is they're afraid that they will contest the top tower. Or if Bloodseeker happens to stick around, uh, they'll just kill him, which is what ends up happening here. Uh, I don't, did Yuma not quelling? Maybe he was just slow on the quelling or he cut the wrong one. I don't know. I'm not really sure what happened there, why he couldn't get out, but yeah, Quinn ends up getting a kill on top now. And the reason why this rotation in particular is clean, because even if they don't kill Bloodseeker, it's going to result in taking the top tower. And that's always nice. When the rotation has kind of a, a, a fail safe per se, right, it's going to have impact no matter what, that's really a great rotation, or at least it's a reliable rotation. And so those tend to come around minute 11 to 12. And you can do that in your pubs too, around minute 11 or 12. Even if your game isn't that good, if you're just a, a hero that threatens the enemy safe leaner, it will likely be a good rotation, especially if you're smoked. So after the top rotation, he jungles up the nearby camps just to be efficient because he's playing TA. From there, he's going to trap up the mid lane and they chase down Mikey. Using a trap, they force out the blink and oh god. Yeah, this matchup's horrible. And from there, they go for a smoke into the triangle. I think the reason they do this is just they assume that the enemy team can't exactly fight. The only active hero on the side of Nigma Galaxy is the Primal Beast, and I honestly think that Mind Control shouldn't have played top this game because I think once he shows top, it's kind of a death sentence for the other sides of the map. I think in hindsight, they should have put the Primal Beast mid and try to like basically have him follow the TA because the only way they threaten TA at all is Primal Beast. That's the only hero that does anything to him at this point in the game, right? And so I, I think this was a horrible map setup from Nigma Galaxy to some extent. Once again, this is all really hard stuff. Realistically, I would have made the same mistake as Mind Control. I'm not saying I'm better than him. I'm just saying that in hindsight, I think that this is how they should have set up the map because it's too easy for Quinn to just play like a psycho. Quap can't do anything to him. Bloodseeker basically can't. Venge does literally nothing. I mean, he can reduce the damage. It's too easy for TA to play around Avenge. Warlock is maybe okay, depending on the scenario, but generally bad. And so yeah, they invade the triangle. It's a great quick smoke. They didn't see it coming. And now from there, he even TP's top. Do they get this kill on the... Oh, nice echo. Okay, th that was a pretty unneeded TP. It ends up working out because they find the, the Venge um, on the back end. But yeah, that was probably not a great TP. All right, and after the top play, if your offlaner decides to do something else, you don't have to leave the area. The side lanes tend to be very, very efficient because they're close to the ancient camps at some point, and just because, well, after you push in the lane, there are just a ton of camps next to you. And so when you're playing TA and you make a gank, you don't have to instantly leave if your offlaner is not there. But his team gets invaded in the triangle, and that's very risky from Nigma Galaxy. And so, oh god, oh no, the Fisher block. Oh god, all right. And yeah, that's gonna be about all for today's video. Hopefully you learned quite a bit about what makes Quinn such a good player. I think a lot of it also has to do with, you know, him kind of abusing the mistakes from the enemy, maybe the positioning mistakes, the heroes that they're showing, uh, the timings that they allow, even the D wards, right? He got two D wards mid that gives him a huge bump in XP and uh, honestly, even a huge bump in gold. And so I'm surprised that they let him have this. This game was really like the perfect game. I mean, to be fair, there's always things that, that could go better. He could be 20, you know, but this game was like everything went right for him, but it looked intentional. You know what I mean? That's what's cool. It really looked intentional. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one and I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below and I'm out. Peace.